<laughs> Can everybody hear me? Yeah. And all good? Yeah. So, um, before I start my speech, I just want to explain that um, I'm going to be talking about a sensitive topic. Um, some of you might have been affected by it, maybe your family members, your friends, um, maybe somebody you know. So I'm going to be talking about a family member and one of his, I guess, co-worker you can say. So just, when I say my speech, just please be respectful because you don't know, you know, who's, who next to you has gone through this. So, thank you. I'm almost 18 years old and I still don't know my dad's biological birthday. It could be April 1st, June 1st, June 2nd. I still don't know. And even me saying this speech right now, I still don't know. He's never once celebrated his actual birthday with me. No cake, no presents, no signing. Growing up, I never understood why. This was obviously weird compared to celebrating my mom's birthday with cakes, presents, and signing, and parties, and stuff like that. However, I vividly remember his other birthday. When I was much younger, my mom and I visited my dad at a really sketchy center and brought him a cake. And it was very odd to me because she would walk in my room and say, all right, we have to wake up at 5.30 in the morning, get there by six, give him a cake, then leave at seven. And I'm like, okay, like, I've been doing this for three years. Why is his birthday always on a Saturday? It's, this doesn't make any sense to me. My dad finally told me why we don't celebrate his actual birthday. We instead celebrate his Alcoholics Anonymous birthday. On July 14th, 1985, my dad was reborn. This is the day in which he forever stopped abusing alcohol and drugs. After I saw this, after I saw my dad relieve his experiences as a recovering alcoholic, I changed the way I conducted myself for both inside and outside the school. My dad explained to me that he got straight A's all throughout high school, played sports, and even received an offer of admission in UCLA. He seemingly had it all. However, he started drinking regularly his freshman year, and what became an innocent habit transformed into a destructive pattern of behavior. He became, quite frankly, a full-blown alcoholic and started doing hard drugs. He eventually dropped out of UCLA and began living in his car. My dad's fall from grace and his ultimate redemption motivated me to take every opportunity I had. His story taught me to not get carried away in the aspect part of life. Now, I know what everybody's thinking. For the remainder of my speech, I'm going to say how no one should experiment in high school or go to parties because this will lead to becoming an alcoholic. Well, that's not the case because that's not what I believe in. I speak the truth and I call it how I see it. Most people in high school are going to experiment and party because that's how it is and there's no denying it. But it's how you act from it. I believe that high school isn't just one big party. Yes, people are going to experiment and party, but I hope that everybody listening to this speech doesn't get carried away in it. High school should be a time where you figure out what you're going to do in life. It shouldn't just be about partying and experimenting. For example, I didn't know what I was going to do in life, and I didn't have a goal. Then I developed a love for real estate and wanted to major in it. So I just figured, you know, I'll just wait till college and then start from there. But then talking to my dad, realizing how in high school you, you can get carried away from your aspirations and your goals. So then I got an internship for a real estate broker, and now I'm taking a step in. For seniors and juniors, if you, if you don't, maybe go get a job or figure out where you're going to major in and just take a step in. Take action in it. For sophomores and freshmen who are too young to get a job, if you don't already, ask your parents to give you hardworking chores. Or if you do, ask your parents, maybe if you do, ask them if you can work over the summer so you know what it feels like to work in the real world. I'm telling all of you this because I believe that if you do experiment, or party, just don't make it first in your life, and don't get carried away in it. Before I end, I want to share a quick story that was a big impact for me and another idea you can take away from this speech. When I attend my dad annual's AA meetings on his birthday, I meet and see many interesting people, like Charlie. My dad said that Charlie used to play Division I football at TCU, or Texas Christian University. He had started abusing alcohol and was kicked off the team. This made me think that Charlie had it all, but he took for granted what he had. He was so caught up in making partying and drinking first that it got carried away and took him losing everything. 
Ironically, what I learned in AA is that the very same traits an alcoholic and drug addict uses to get drugs and alcohol are the exact same traits they can use to be successful in society once they get sober. And if you guys don't really know what that means, for example, somebody who is an addict of alcohol or drugs will do whatever they can to get the supplement, to get the supply, right? They'll drink mouthwash to get a buzz, or they'll steal money from people to get the drug. But that like tenacity and that work ethic they do to get that, once they're sober, they can use that for a job. Like for example, sales. They'll do whatever they can to get the sale, and they'll do whatever they can to work harder in their job. That's why this speech is very sad, because a lot of people who don't get help and that are going through this have a lot of potential and could be a big benefit to society. Uh, thank you and shout out to my dad. That couldn't make it because I told him it started at 11.35. That is my <laughs>